All right, so I want to talk about scripting defined symbols or C sharp defined symbols. They are a very useful feature to quickly turn on and off various parts of your code, such as changing it for one build or another, depending on your target system. Now, quickly is actually not necessarily a word that I would try to define it with, despite the fact that I have. Um, it's actually been kind of a bothersome nuisance in most of the projects where I've had it because I've found it kind of annoying and painful to make those switches, especially if I need to change off regularly to compare test results. So I wanted a faster way to do it, and I put this together. So basically, I have up here set to normal, and you can see over here we have a menu item set to normal and do it. I set the menu itself to change so that I could see very easily when it changes up here. Um, if I have it as a child element that changes names, that's harder to keep track of. Okay, so I have a duplicate up here that if it is not server mode, then we have set to server, which right now we have set to normal, set to normal, and we call do it, which is what effectively makes our changes, and I'll get to the code in a minute. But let's see it in action. If I click set to normal, oh, one more place to pay attention to is right here, where we have scripting defined symbols, and we have server mode called out in it. So I'm going to hit do it. First thing is over here, got rid of server mode. Over here for server mode, it is... Oh, we switched to normal. We actually just got rid of server mode, so sorry. This was the one that was disabled, and now it's enabled. Additionally, we have set to server active up here already. Now, this one takes the longest to make the switch. Let's try it again. Do it. And then server mode is there. That mode got changed. And now this is still set to server. Three, two, there. Okay, that one takes a little bit longer, and depending on how large your project is, that might take even longer, uh, whatever time it takes for your assemblies to build in general. <clears throat> okay, so let's go over exactly what's happening here. So I have in here the if, de the, the if definition for server mode. If we have server mode enabled, which right now we do, it's part of our scripting defined symbols. Now this content, I, in order to change it has proven kind of difficult. I had to go through probably about three or four hours of research and experimentation to get to this result. Um, I probably still have a bunch of it commented out. Eh, not that much. Okay. Uh, just little pieces of it here and there. Oh yeah, like these functions aren't even necessary anymore. They can go away. Uh, they were part of a previous attempt to resolve this. Okay, so the key thing is that uh, inside of here, we have the scripting defined, so those get stored in the project file. The project file is automatically generated in Unity, and that gets stored to the root of the project. It is not in assets. So your asset database, or a refresh of the assets, doesn't actually capture that. So <laughs> there's a couple things to do in this. Um, over here, each one of these are just effectively, each one of these commands are just effectively calling this do it command, which is what actually does it. So let's take a look at what's happening here. I'm going to expand this out. And you can see when it's calling do it, it's passing in the individual define symbols that we want. So over here we have development build and we have unity post processing stack v2. On this one, we have the same thing but we also have server mode. It's a semicolon delimited, delimited list. Okay, so the way to set these in code is unity editor dot player settings dot set scripting defined symbols for group. So I'm setting it for Android because that happens to be what I'm building out to. Um, I might also set in this code my target build so it actually changes unity over, but in a lot of cases what I'm primarily looking at are some of the immediate changes that happen just for having changed the build definitions or the definitions themselves. Okay, so I'm passing in the defines, the semicolon delimited list of definition symbol definitions uh, to this command, and that executes it. Now that does make the change, but it tends to be slow, and it's not pushing out these changes everywhere, at least not in any timely manner. Um, so over here, the next code, the line of code that I'm calling is unity editor dot, or sorry, unity dot code editor dot code editor. These are namespace. 
So I can get rid of those. I have them called out to make it easier to find. Same thing, Unity Editor is namespace up here. So the class is player settings. The class over here is code editor. And then I get the current editor from it, a static command available. And then I say sync all. Now this will synchronize the project. So any new files, anything like that, that needs to get pushed out uh, to the uh, your C-sharp project, that's going to get pushed out from this. The only change we're officially doing is this one right here, where we're setting up the defined symbols. OK, so that calls sync all. And that's why Visual Studio updated so quickly. That was one of the key things I was looking for. However, I've tried like 20 different things to get Unity to respect those changes or to even recognize that those changes happened and rebuild right away, but it will not. I have not been able to trigger that to happen. Um, not when I'm changing the defines. It operates faster if I actually make a change to a C Sharp file itself. So another potential solution for this is that we literally have an empty C Sharp file that we put in a define, uh, in this case, define server mode. And then we remove that line, that we find and remove that line. And that would effectively happen a lot faster and easier. Now, that also means it's not propagated to every project that it's split out to. So that does matter. OK, um, so that's the way that I've been able to get this to work um, effectively, just by putting a test, a test method up here to make it work better. Um, a couple things in here. Um, I do recommend that for your external tools, if you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, that you end up getting the package manager for it. So you can see we have Visual Studio Editor and Visual Studio Code Editor available. There's also JetBrains Writer Editor and other ones that you can find to make sure that you actually have the latest connection to get into whatever particular IDE you're working with. That'll help make sure that the APIs that are calling things like uh, regenerate project files, uh, which is effectively what the sync all is doing right now, um, that or that's part of what it's doing, that it, it's available and has the fastest connection into the Visual Studio or Visual Studio code that you're, you can have available. OK, um, another thing just to call out is that if you wanted to find the scripting defined symbols, you'll find them under Project Settings. Uh, was that Edit, Project Settings, and then Player. And then up at the top, we are in Other Settings, and then scrolling really far down to get down to Script Compilation with the section for Scripting Defined Symbols. And you can just list them off here. OK, hopefully you found this useful. If anybody happens to try this uh, and has a way to get it to happen faster without that five to second lag time, so if I click Set to Normal, Do It, I can still interact in here in Unity, and it's still on Set to Normal. It hasn't made its code changes yet. It's still Set to Normal. Over here, I can there we go, Set to Server. I had that entire time where I'm just not going to trust this, where I could have clicked that, and then I expect to be able to run tests. That would be the perfect place to do this, uh, where I effectively change the environment and then execute the have it execute the test cases against that. If I could get that to run from one command, that would be awesome. But at least being able to switch it and have it switch across Visual Studio across here and be respected for the changes to the uh, menu system and the other environments uh, variables inside of this, that's exact, I, I, That's the minimum of what I needed. OK. So again, if you've got any thoughts or advice or ways to make this work better, please feel free to uh, please com uh, comment on this. I'd love to hear about better solutions, uh, their options. And if there are other videos out there that cover uh, how to make this part work better, please share it out below. Thanks.